Angola, a country synonymous with endless conflict. Generations of Angolans have known little else but dogged, brutal war. In late 2001, government forces conducted a major offensive against UNITA that progressively advanced across the country. Weakened by the international ban on conflict diamonds, Jonas Savimbi and his rebel army found themselves cornered in the remote eastern province of Moshiko. On February the 22nd, 2002, Jonas Savimbi was killed by a hail of bullets in a government commando ambush. Savimbi's death led to an armistice and the signing of a peace accord on the 4th of April 2002, ending 27 years of bloody conflict. War has utterly destroyed the country. Its infrastructure is in ruins, a quarter of the population have been displaced from their homes, and the soil is riddled with landmines. Despite enormous wealth in natural resources, the United Nations ranks the Angolan population the most wretched on earth. The guns in Angola have fallen silent. Those who survived the war must now survive the peace. Mines Advisory Group, the Landmine Clearance Charity, has programs throughout the world in conflict and post-conflict zones. MAG's approach to dealing with the problems of landmines provides a unique window onto the diverse risks that communities face when war has ended. More than three million people have been displaced by the war in Angola. They live in squalid camps far from their homes. There is little to eat and living conditions are grim. Returning to what is left of their villages and homes will be an enormous task. In the meantime, they must learn to live in overcrowded, unfamiliar places. Mine awareness teams visit the camps to inform people how to live as safely as possible in potentially mined environments. To ensure that their message is understood, the teams use popular songs that warn of the dangers of mines. The mine awareness teams play games with children that teach them the consequences of stepping on a mine or playing with objects that might explode. A large proportion of Angolans are subsistence farmers. They are desperate to return to their fertile lands to cultivate food. However, the soil bristles with landmines and the population lacks sufficient seeds and tools to begin planting. More failed harvests will mean hunger and famine will persist in Angola. For Ronaldo and his team, the dangerous daily routine of ridding Angola of its deadly inheritance is time-consuming, painstaking, but ultimately very rewarding. As people return to their villages to rebuild their lives, they often find themselves living among the unexploded detritus of war. Community liaison teams maintain links with these communities to assess their knowledge of mines and unexploded ordnance, to determine if there are any problems in the area, and to target demining activities to benefit the maximum number of people. If they pose an immediate threat to the community, the MAG team will radio in their report. Ronaldo will come to the village with a rapid reaction team. This technical team will delicately uncover the ordnance and determine what condition it is in. In most cases, the ordnance will be destroyed safely in situ, reducing the risk of accidents for everyone in the village. If Angolans are to endure their ruinous legacy of strife, they will need foreign assistance, wise benevolent leadership, and they will need to clear a path to recovery, one deadly mine at a time. Dos, um, zero, fogo!